you know, Fire Emblem Warriors is a great game and all, but I wish it was on a designated handheld that played and looked worse. And I thought science said it wasn't possible. I'm sure most of you know the story of the Game Boy by this point. Sold like a bajillion units, Tetris is like the best game ever, yada yada yada. That's why I thought we could talk about more modern handhelds for this video. Like, come on, when's the last time you heard someone talk about the 3DS in 2022? I think I earned this. Let's get started and talk about the PS Vita. And I know it's surprising to be talking about the PS Vita. I'm pretty sure Tetanus has more relevancy than this system. The PlayStation Vita released in February 12th of 2012. I'm just gonna get this out of the way now. This thing flopped hard. Sure, 60 million units sold isn't that bad, but compared to their usual sales, this was not as good. But just because it didn't sell well doesn't mean I'm not gonna give it a fair review. To start us off with, the buttons are actually really nice. It may just be me, but I prefer when systems have the really clicky buttons instead of the mushy ones. The thumbsticks are pretty nice too. The shoulder buttons could be better, but they're good enough. Overall, the build quality is nice. Sony definitely didn't cheap out on anything here. As for the games, I mean, if this is your thing, good for you. I think we all know the PS Vita didn't have the best games to offer, but you can still only play Persona 3 and 4 on this system. Oh. Well, you can only play them portably on the PS Vita. Yeah, never mind, the PS Vita's worthless. The PS Vita may not have been a great success, but what if we take a look at a different handheld? Now here's a handheld I think we all remember a bit more fondly. You can never go wrong with a 3DS. Let's start off with the controls. Just like the PS Vita, the 3DS also has clicky buttons. It could just be me, but I'm not a huge fan of the circle pad. Instead of an analog stick, it gave us a pad that just slides around. And I understand why they designed it like that. A regular analog stick wouldn't work with a system that folds open like the 3DS does. The last problem I have is where the start and select buttons are. Notice how start and select are all the way at the bottom of the screen. If you were playing a game like Mario Kart or Smash Bros, you might get screwed over because it takes a hot second for your thumbs to go from the buttons to the pause button. Other than those two issues, everything else is built well. Now let's get into the game library. The 3DS has some pretty amazing games. Animal Crossing New Leaf, The Legend of Zelda Link Between Worlds, Fire Emblem Awakening, all of these are some really good games. And the max price for 3DS games were only $40, which was really nice. There are even some game series that I think really thrived during the 3DS era. Series like Ace Attorney and Fire Emblem did really well when the 3DS came out. The 3DS is also backwards compatible with original DS games. I know Nintendo usually does this, but it's always really nice. There is another kind of 3DS that I wanted to talk about that I'm sure you're all familiar with. Oh yeah, we're talking about the original 2DS. Remember that thing you used to put butter on because you thought it was a piece of toast? Wait, it isn't? Honestly, I was always a big fan of the original 2DS. Hardcore Nintendo fans, get your pitchforks and torches ready because I am not a huge fan of the clamshell design. I don't know, the clamshell design just always felt a little awkward to me. But arguments about the clamshell design are going to be put on pause, because I think we can all agree that the 2DS got some pretty amazing designs. I always thought the Mario Maker one looked kind of cool, and I want to get my hands on one of the transparent Pokemon 2DSs one of these days. Along with the fact that most 2DSs came with a free game, it was pretty nice. What made it even better is that they picked actual good games. They had ones for Pokemon and New Super Mario Bros 2, but the one I personally owned was the Mario Kart 7 version. It makes sense they chose games people actually like. How would you feel if you picked up a new DS and it came with Power Rangers? God damn it. But seriously, around 2017, you couldn't find a 2DS that didn't come with a game. But when you think about it, it kind of makes sense. Most of the people who bought a 2DS just wanted to play a couple games, so bundling in one that they probably wanted to play just makes sense. Keep in mind, I said most people. I'm sure the other people just bought one because it was cheap and it came with a game. And I would know most about that demographic because I was part of it. But hey, there's no use dwelling on the past. What if we move on to the Nintendo Switch? I say Nintendo Switch, but I'm really talking about the Switch Lite. The Switch Lite released about a month after the Better Battery Switch came out. Personally, I really love the Switch Lite. When I saw the trailers for the Switch Lite, I just had to get one. Except for the fact that I bought mine like two years after it released. But anyway, it's a really awesome system. Luckily for us, the Switch Lite comes with all the benefits of the better battery switch. And in case if you don't know the benefits of a better battery switch, I'll give you a quick rundown. The better battery switch comes with a better cooling system, a longer lasting battery, and a faster charging battery. 
If you already had the original Switch, there was no real reason to upgrade to the battery one. Anyway, all the improvements of the battery switch came to the Switch Lite, and I'm glad they brought over all those changes, because it wouldn't make sense to have a designated portable system and have a bad battery life. With all the battery stuff out of the way, let's talk about the controls. Everything's practically the exact same, with two changes. The D-pad is better, and the buttons are mushier. And I know earlier I said I don't like mushy buttons, but if I had to sacrifice clicky buttons to get rid of the awful D-pad on the original Switch, I'll do it. And before I get any comments about it, I know that the Switch D-pad is built like that so another player can use it as a regular controller, but that's not gonna stop me from disliking it. Anyway, other than those two changes, everything's the same. And in case if you were wondering, yes, the Joy-Cons will still drift. At least with the original Switch, if your Joy-Con started to drift, you could just buy a new controller, but with the Switch Lite, you'd have to either get a new system or send the whole thing back. And you're probably thinking, couldn't you just get a new controller for your Switch Lite? And yes, you definitely could. Original controllers still connect to the Switch Lite. But since the Lite doesn't have a kickstand, you'd probably have to prop it up on a table, which is kinda difficult. So honestly, in my opinion, just get the original or a Switch OLED. The Switch costs around $300, which is $100 more than the Switch Lite, but overall, it's just more worth it. But that's not going to stop my quick gush of the Switch Lite. The Switch Lite can still play 720p and 60fps just like the regular Switch in handheld mode. And like I mentioned before, the Switch Lite has a better cooling system, so that means the fan doesn't get too loud. And another nice thing is that the battery doesn't get too hot. I played some fairly powerful games on my Switch Lite, like Fire Emblem Warriors and Persona 5 Scramble, and it really didn't have a problem running them. If you're someone who is just going to use the Switch in portable mode and wanted to play a couple games, I would definitely recommend this. I've had one for a little while, and I really enjoyed it. It may not be able to connect to a TV, but yes, Lynn, it can still play Mario Kart. Anyway, with all that out of the way, let's talk about the Nintendo Switch library. I think we're all aware that the Nintendo Switch has a pretty great library of games. Fire Emblem Three Houses, Mario Kart 8 Deluxe, uh, Fortnite if that's your thing, I don't know. Regardless if you have a Switch Lite or a Switch OLED, it's pretty nice to have some home console games be portable. One of my biggest dreams was to play Skyrim on a toilet. As you're probably able to tell, I'm a really big fan of the Nintendo Switch. I just love a lot of things about the Nintendo Switch. Definitely one of my favorite consoles of all time. I'd say handheld gaming is in a good spot right now. The Nintendo Switch is thriving, the PS Vita is sitting dead in its grave, but I do feel like there was one system that got cheated. I wish my TV remote could play Crash Bandicoot. 